Happy Sabbath, church. Ah, you can do better than that. Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Can we see by a show of hands? Who is happy to be in church today? Who is, ah, oh, some of you are not happy. Boys and girls, let's show them we are happy. Who is happy to be in church today? If you are happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. If you are happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. If you are happy and you know it, and your face will truly show it. If you are happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Could we have someone pray for us? Where is our McKenna? Come. Come. Okay, we, we are praying. We are praying. Let's ah. pray. Mm-hmm. Our kind and loving Father, please may help us. As we're starting the children's sermon, please may help us to be attentive and to obey. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Fantastic. Could we have the next slide, please? Boys and girls, can we tell the church who has been presenting the children's sermon for the month of January? Young Missionaries Club. Awesome. We are the Young Missionaries Club, also known as the YMC. We are on fire for Jesus and we are looking forward to his second coming. Now, what is our theme for this month? I want one person. Do you have the next? Yeah. One person to tell us what is our theme for this month? Spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts and ministries. And oh boy, haven't we learned so much these past few days? Okay, now we need to think about something. Some people have not been with us all these three Sabbaths. Or maybe some boys and girls need to be reminded of these wonderful lessons, right? Yes. So, as we have said, our theme is spiritual gifts and ministries. So, we are learning about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Can someone tell us? Who is the Holy Spirit? Yes? Who is the Holy Spirit? Angie, let Angie answer. I think you answered. Who is the Holy Spirit? He's the third Godhead. He's the third member of the Godhead. Remember, we have God in three person. Can someone tell us who makes up the Godhead? Quickly, someone tell us. Yes? God the Father, yes. God the Son, and God the Holy God Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And remember, we said the Holy Spirit is not a thing. The Holy Spirit is not a force. The Holy Spirit is not an energy. He is a person, the third Godhead, the third member of the Godhead. Now, what are some of the important things that the Holy Spirit did in the past? In the past. Can someone tell us what the Holy Spirit did? Yes, someone give a mic to Lucinda. He inspired some people to write the Bible. Yes, he inspired the writing of... Scripture. So when you're reading the Bible, God is talking to you. What is something else he's done? Something that was done at the beginning of time. Uh, yes, yes. Someone give uh, Grania, Grania the mic. He was there in creation. Yes, he was active during creation. And then something very important happened for our salvation. What did the Holy Spirit do? Yes, Randa Jane. He died for us. Uh, what did the Holy Spirit do? We are not talking about Jesus. What did the Holy Spirit do at the time of our salvation when Jesus was supposed to come? Remember? Yeah, who was the mother of Jesus? Yes, someone give Gracie a mic. Yes? Mary was the mother of Jesus. Yes, and what did the Holy Spirit do? He told Mary that she'll be a son and the Holy Spirit will be upon her. Yes, the Holy Spirit would come upon her. And so we've been talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit this month because even as we are speaking right now, the Holy Spirit is still active. He convicts people of sin. He gives us the gifts of the Spirit. And these are the gifts that we have been talking about. What are, what are some of these gifts? Please, let's have the next slides. What are some of the next 
So some of the gifts? Prophecy. Prophecy. What else? Wisdom. Wisdom. Uh-huh. Knowledge. Knowledge. What He's else? He's our comforter. Sorry? He's our comforter. He's our comforter. Speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. Okay. Yes. And there are so many other gifts of the Holy Spirit, which sometimes we don't even think are gifts. For example, the Holy Spirit encourages, I mean, gives us the gift of encouragement. We have people who know how to say positive words to uplift others. And then we have people who are natural, they are generous. The Holy Spirit gives them the gift of giving, and then some of us are natural leaders because we have the gift of leadership from the Holy Spirit. And we can find those um, gifts in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 10, Romans chapter 12, verse 6 and 8, and Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. Now, remember, these gifts are given for the edification of the members of the body of Christ. Today, we are going to learn about the most misunderstood gift. Can somebody tell us, what is the most misunderstood gift? Tell us, tell us. Give her a microphone to tell us. Uh, so, someone help her quickly, quickly. Speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. Hmm. We are going to find out shortly why it is the most misunderstood gift. But somebody, I want, who is going to read for us our, our memory verse, our Bible, uh, Bible text for today? Someone is reading for us from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12. And 13. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12. Say loudly. And it says, Even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edif edification of the church that you seek to excel. Yeah. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. Okay. So now we need to have a candid discussion about the gift of speaking in tongues. What do you understand by speaking in tongues? Yes, Alisa. Quickly, quickly, come and say quickly. It, it is speaking another language that somebody doesn't understand. Okay, maybe speaking a language that is different from your mother tongue. Okay, so how many of you know how to, how many of you know how to speak your mother tongue? How many? How many? Someone give Deborah a microphone so she can greet us in her mother tongue. Yeah? I noticed that many of us here, we don't know, but some of us we know. So good job, parents, yes? Yamune. And how do we respond? Achamege. Hey, well done. Okay, who else knows their mother tongue? Yes, yes, tell us, tell us. Idinade. Idinade. Adimaber. Aha, well done. Okay, so we have other languages, not just in this country. We have other languages in other countries like German, French, Chinese, eh? Spanish, yes. Now, we need to understand, is it important to speak in tongues? Yeah, because it is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Can someone read for us Mark chapter 16, verse 17? Quickly, give him the microphone. Uh, and it says, and these signs will follow those who believe. Mm -hmm. In my name, they will cast out demons and they will speak in new tongues. Yes, they will cast out demons and they will speak in new tongues. So, these are the words of Jesus. And so we learn it is okay to speak in tongues as long as, as long as it is the true gift of tongues described in the Bible and given by the Holy Spirit. So, what does the Bible say about speaking in tongues? The word tongue in Greek is glossa, which can refer to the organ of the body by which we speak. That is the tongue. And uh, we'll read all those verses there for the sake of time. I'll just say speaking in tongues is therefore speaking in a language other than your mother tongue. Now, there's a very important question. Because you see now I'm speaking to you in English. Everyone can understand or most of you, maybe not everyone, many here can understand. And is it necessary to speak in tongues? Where did it all begin? Where did it all begin? Yeah? I want you to know something. Children, I want you to know something. In the beginning, in the beginning, 
all men spoke the same language. Okay? In Genesis chapter 11, verse 1, it says that the whole world had one language and one speech. Because we are all the descendants of Adam and Eve. And up until the time of the great flood, everyone spoke the same language. What changed? What changed? It means we have to go to Genesis chapter 11, verse 4. So, immediately after the flood, some naughty men, children do we hear? Some naughty men and women, these ones, they came together in rebellion against God, and they were puffed up with pride, and they said, since none, uh, they, they were puffed up with pride, and they wanted to do something. But now wait a minute, because we were all speaking the same language. What language do you think they were speaking? Hmm? Someone, can someone guess which language? Which language? Yes, teacher Steve, which language were they? Suba. Suba. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Who knows? You, are you there? We don't know. But these people are going to speak that first language, that first language. So this is what happened at the, 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 the plains of China uh, on the story of the, the Tower of Babel. Let's see what they were telling each other. So what just they were saying in that language, that first language, what they were telling each other is that they were going to build a great city. And this city would reach up in the heavens. And they were going to make a name for themselves. And they're also saying they were not going to do what God said. Remember God said they should scatter? Uh, uh, they should go and fill the, the world. Then they wanted to stay in one place. And they wanted to be united in rebellion. Now remember we are just coming from the flood. Where God had to destroy the world in a flood. Okay? So they were united in rebellion against God. Now... God looked at this and said, ah, I've already promised these people I will not destroy the world in a flood. So what are we going to do? Hmm. And then God came up with a brilliant idea. What did God do? What did God do? What did God do, someone? Yes, what did God do? Quickly. What did God do? Give a man. Quickly. He... He mixed their languages. Yes, God confused their languages. So let's see what is happening now. Listen here. What is happening in the valley of China? Let's show them what happened on that day where that God confused their languages. Uh huh. <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Kale, too late. Here is not straight. Here is not straight. Ma this part here is not very straight. Ma ah, ah, ma ah, this part. Just is Will come down. The foundation is weak. Ah, ah, no. ah, mm -mm. So, this one is speaking in French. This one is speaking in German. This one is speaking in which language? English, Swahili, all sorts of languages. And so, God confused their languages, and they were scattered all over the world. And people who were joined together in the same language, they came together, and uh, they moved away from those who were not speaking the same languages as them. Now, God was able to fulfill his plan for salvation. In the fullness of time, the promise that was made to man, God was able to fulfill it. So, did Jesus die for one race only? Did Jesus die for one race only? No. Jesus died for all of us. Okay? So something had to happen. And this takes us to Pentecost. So what happened during Pentecost? Uh, Acts chapter 2 verse 4 says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues. So the context of Acts chapter, uh, chapter 2 is that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, uh, which appeared like tongues of fire being placed on each of the apostles' head, 
was that they were enabled to speak in languages so that those people who are around them who are speaking in a different language, they were able to understand. But now what does the Bible say about speaking in tongues? It takes us to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, uh, verses 2 to 13. Now, for the interest of time, I will just summarize. Because it says, for he who speaks in tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks in mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation for the men, for all men. So uh, Paul was saying that he wished that all men would speak with tongues unless all men would, uh, he said that I would wish all men would prophesy. And if they were to speak in tongues, somebody must be there to interpret. So 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26 say, How is it then, brethren, if anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or at most three, each in turn, and let one interpret. But if there's no interpreter, let him keep silent in church and let him speak to himself and to God. What would happen if everyone is speaking in tongues at the same time? What would happen? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. That is, whoever believes in him Can someone tell us what they are saying? But have everlasting life. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, because they are all speaking in, this, in different tongues and no one can understand what we are saying. So God says in verse 33 of 1 Corinthians 14 that God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. So children, what have we learned? What have we learned? Can you have the microphone? Help them to tell us what we have learned. Yes? Speaking in tongues is a spiritual gift. It's a spiritual gift. Uh -huh. Speaking in tongues is, is a different language. Okay. So, um, and then let me, for the sake of time, I will summarize. We are allowed to speak in tongues, but we must do so in an orderly manner because God is a God of order. So if there's no interpreter, we should keep silent in church. Okay? Can we all stand up and wind up? Okay. I think for the interest of time, we'll just have someone come and pray for us. Okay, who's going to pray? Who's going to pray? Come, come and pray. Give him a mic to pray. Okay, when we want to talk to Jesus, we are praying. Let's pray. Uh -huh. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for teaching us about your gift, the Holy Spirit. May you bless us as we go back to our seats. Jesus, no more pray. Amen. Amen. That is all we have for you today from the YMC. Keep reading your Bible, keep praying the promise, and keep shining for Jesus. Bye. Bye.